Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Sailing Doodles. This is episode 5, part 2. Uh, in this episode we finish our sail across the Gulf of Mexico and we run into a couple issues. Uh, we lose uh, the main halyard up the, ma up the mast and so <laughs> Megan has to uh, winch me all the way to the top a couple different times actually. Uh, but she gets it done, she's super buff. Thanks so much for her. Uh, and then also uh, we run into a storm. We're so close to land we can taste it about 50-60 miles out and a big storm rolls through and we have to deal with that. But we make it to dry land safely and we're really happy about that. So thanks for watching guys. I love sitting out here. This is probably my favorite part of sailing. I was just sitting on the bow and contemplating the waves and what's underneath. Last night was pretty tough. I was sick for a lot of it. Bless Bob's heart, he had to stay up all night because I was just passed out and was nauseous and dizzy and weak. It was just really uncomfortable and I got really agitated, but he let me sleep and I feel so much better. That morning the wind finally picked up enough for us to put the sails up. Although it was still coming from the wrong direction, at least we were moving under our own power again. We just couldn't continue to motor, we simply did not have the gas. Well, after the first two days of good winds, albeit light winds, uh, the last three days have been pretty poor in the wind department. The wind has literally, for the last three days, been directly out of where we need to go. So obviously you can't sail into that, so you have to beat into the wind, so you're going this way, this way, it's just, it's pretty bad. And then of course, the wind is still out of that direction, but now it's like less than five knots. So we're just sitting here and it's hot. I'm ready for a wind change, just any direction. Give me 10 knots from any other direction it's been in, please. Please. 10 knots, any other direction. I don't know if anybody's listening. The winds let up again that morning, so we decided to take advantage of the light winds and calm weather to do a little boat maintenance. Megan, uh, was strong enough to hoist me up the main halyard there so we could uh, take care of the sail guard on the main spreader. It was really starting to dig into the sail and I just didn't want it to rip the sails. So she hoisted me up and uh, it was a little scary going halfway up the mast but not too bad. Uh, but the, the hard part is when you know, you're rocking and rolling two or three feet at boat level when you go up 30 feet in the air that two or three feet gets amplified so you're swinging seven or eight feet side to side and it's uh, it can be a little scary. As you can see right there, that's my own stupid fault. I was trying to hook the main halyard back up to the mainsail, and I let it slip right out of my hand, and because of the rock and roll and side to side, it goes flying around in the rigging, and next thing you know, it sucks up all the way to the top of the mast. It was really disappointing. So then I had to give Megan the bad news that not only did she have to run me up to the halyard again, she had to run me all the way to the top this time. It's a good 60 plus feet. It was really scary. It wasn't too much fun. But it was something we had to do. We're 200 miles or you know ish from land, and it just had to be done. We took it as a good sign that right after we finished uh, our issue with the main halyard, we came across a pod of dolphins. Gosh, there must have been 15 or 20 of them. It was really cool seeing them swim in our bow wave like that. Uh, it really inspired us to keep going. nothing like a little breakfast in bed for the boys to keep them going. 
Goose didn't seem too interested in eating, but Maverick sure was. He always wants to eat. Hey guys, 24 hours till dry land. What do you think? Oh man. What do you think? I'm so excited. If this wind keeps up, we're hauling some butt. So. Oh no. Well, we are absolutely screaming today. The uh, wind is perfect. It's out of the northeast. It's swifting, switching even more northerly, which would be even better. Going faster. It's uh, 15 knots is apparent wind speed. And we're doing about eight, seven and a half to eight knots. We're really fine. Part of it is just me figuring out this boat, too. Like, uh, part of it is the dinghy. We were towing it behind us, and I was heard to have it in the same part of the swell and the next swell back as you are. You know, if you're on the downslope, it needs to be on the downslope of the swell behind you. Well, uh, my rope's only 100 foot long, or the line's only 100 foot long on that, so um, I couldn't get it out that far. So uh, basically, because the swells here are really big, um, are really spaced out. I, mean, I just pulled it up real close, so it's pretty much on the same swell with us, and that got us at least a half a knot, maybe even more. It's amazing. So we're doing uh, seven and a half, eight knots. We were kind of worried we may not make landfall by tomorrow, but definitely, if this keeps up, we'll be there by noon tomorrow. So we're pretty excited about it. Uh, we can taste it, almost. Luckiest man in the world, right there. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Cleaning up dog pee in the cabin when it's rocking and rolling like that, and you're really healed over, is uh, quite a different story than the last couple times I had to do it. It was uh, it's a difficult task to keep your balance and use a mop and all that. <laughs> yeah, you get to wash the sheeny feet on. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Use the handy dandy hand washing machine. You said you got pee on you? about the easiest way I found to clean the mats to uh, kind of give the dog some tread in the cabin. Basically, I just drag them in the water for a while and, and let them dry on the rail. Works pretty well. How many, how many times harder is it doing anything while you're heaved over like this, plus all up and down? Can you tell by the sweat on my forehead? Um, like a hundred times harder. Yeah. And more painful. Yes. It's a challenge. It's it's like a sport at this point. Yeah. Can you see it turning? Last night. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. We're all excited. This might be our last night on the boat. Well, crossing the Gulf anyway. I know they're ready to get off. Maverick Goose. What's up, buddy? Right now we're going through, a, in my opinion, awful storm. Um, we're about 60 miles from our destination, our first stop. The swells are just getting bigger and bigger, seemingly, or maybe it's just my imagination, but it's pretty scary. I'm going to see if I can keep still enough to show you this crazy person. I thought it was isolated stuff. Uh, it kind of is. I mean, it's already over. The next set came through, and uh, it was a good 30 knots. Uh, so we, you helped me bring down the head sail, and then I went up and reefed. You know, put my harness on and and reefed the uh, mainsail, and I'm totally soaked now. But uh, and of course now it's the wind's dropped off as soon as I finished doing that. So uh, it was up to 30 knots. Now it's I think well last I looked it was 20. It feels like less now. Still shaking a little bit, but. Um, the weather's calmed down enough so I can calm down a little bit. And you're not in the ocean floating around somewhere, so that makes me feel better. But that was terrifying. I've never, I've never seen anything like that other than in movies before. Um, but we did it together, and then you scaled the deck while we were going through it, and that was awful because all I could think about is you falling off and me trying to get through the rest of it by myself. 
The winds continued to hold steady at about 25 knots. I didn't want to say anything to Megan at the time, but I knew that getting through the winds and the gust at first was only half the battle there. Sustained winds like that will build some pretty big seas pretty quick, and they really did. It's hard to tell from the boat or from the angle of the, pic the camera here, but really those waves were 15 foot plus and got down in some deep troughs. It's pretty scary when you see a big wave well above you as you come by it. Waves seemed to stabilize and didn't get too much bigger and they weren't breaking or anything so we were making good headway in the right direction so we just kept on going. Eventually the wind slacked off enough maybe under 20 knots so that we uh, unreefed the mainsail and uh, kept on moving. Really did wasn't too bad at all. The autopilot was really having a hard time with the, the big swells and the heavy winds, so uh, I kind of took over and, and steered the boat for a while. You can see it's it's a pretty big workout. Imagine if you didn't have an autopilot having to do that for 24 hours a day. That would just be a major task. Off in the distance, we finally saw the light tower of Loggerhead Key, and Bush Key wasn't far behind. Sight for sore eyes, land after seven days. Gosh, we can't wait to set foot on dry ground. So nice. I might kiss the beach. Although the sun's already down. Uh... Those were some tired puppy dogs after the stressful 12, 14 hours they had previously. So we made it. All 800 ish miles. Uh... Is that all? It's not like much more than that. Well, that's as the crow flies. It probably was more than that. What were you thinking when we were in the middle of that? Uh, just I hope it doesn't get any worse. <laughs> you were thinking, oh, well, this is it. No, no, no. Were you? No, but I thought it was a possibility. Yeah. It can be a possibility you get hit by a bus tomorrow walking down the street. Just saying. Yeah. So, well, we made it. Oh. <laughs> Even though it's not as tipsy, tip, we're still at anchor and tipsy. Tip, so. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah. Okay, thanks for watching another episode of Sailing Doodles. We'll have another one coming to you soon uh, when we make it to dry land and kind of show you some stuff going on there. Uh, also, if you like what you see, please uh, click down below. Click subscribe and like, it really helps. Or check out our website, sailingdoodles.com, uh, and you can support us on Patreon. That really helps. Every little bit helps. Thanks so much, guys. And also, the question of the day is, is trying to decide, should I go full pirate beard or trim it up? I don't know. Just leave comments down below, and we'll uh, kind of figure it out. Thanks.